Hi, good evening, Sec ones. This is Mr. Xiao, and I want to conduct a lesson on inference for you through this video. The reason I'm conducting this lesson is because some of you uh, had to go to the dentist or for your vaccination appointments during my history lesson, and you might need to recap on what you missed in class. Uh, this video will also be helpful for anyone who needs to revise for WA1. Uh, to recap, inference will be half of the exam, the history exam, this term, uh, and there will be two inference questions, each one of five marks. So uh, let's get started on this lesson. If you need to, you can speed up, slow down, and pause this video where necessary uh, to suit your learning pace. Uh, before we get started, I would like to remind you that you should have this worksheet on inference with you. You should have this worksheet and if you don't have it, you can find it in my locker. So in locker 21, there will be this worksheet waiting for you. So I recommend you go and pick up the worksheet. So let's get started. With this worksheet, uh, let's highlight. Today we are learning about inference. We are going to learn how to do an inference. We, go, we are going to learn how to explain and how to give evidence from the source. So I want you to fill in this box. What do I see? And then fill in what does it make me think? So let's start with the lesson. Okay, set once. Pause this video and write down what do you see and what does it make you think. Okay, I hope you wrote it down. When I conducted, when I conducted this lesson today, uh, many students said, I see a man who is running and looks shocked. And he's looking at his watch and he is a... Uh, holding a laptop. So, so many students said, a man who is running, looking at watch, and holding a laptop. And many students said, well, this makes me think that the man is running late for something. And in the end, in the end, someone said, um, well, he's probably going to be late for work. How did we know that a man was late for work? Because we looked at the source and we saw that he's looking at his watch and he's very flustered, very shocked, and he's holding a laptop. So we get a sense that he is worried about the time. He's worried about the time. Right? And that's why we figured out that he's late. And we got the idea of work from the laptop. Okay, let's go on to the second scenario. Let's go on to the second scenario. And I got some of your friends to read this out. So let's read it out quickly. Bartley was woken up by a loud noise at 11 p.m. The front door had slammed shut. It was probably that. He always came home at this time, although the door wasn't normally noisy. Then, Bartley heard someone stomping across the living room. Pause if you need to read this for yourself. Pause. And let's go back to the worksheet. What do we see? Now it's because it's text we're going to be quoting. Okay, I think maybe it might be easier if I zoom in for you. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, so we see, um, we saw the words loud noise. We saw the words slam shut.
and we saw the words someone stomping. Please write this down and then pause the video and write down what you think. So what did you write? What did you write? Um, many students said that it could be a robber or a burglar and in 1S7, one boy even said it could be a serial killer. Okay, let's not think about the killer. And then another option that came up was um, that is angry. And I think 1S2 said to me today, that is drunk. Okay, which of these options is more likely? Is it a burglar or is it the angry dad? Now, when we looked at this scenario, I think all three Sec 1 classes concluded that it was an angry dad. Why do you think this is the case? Why can't it be a burglar? Yes, so some of you realize that a burglar wouldn't be slamming the front door and wouldn't be stomping across the room. The burglar wouldn't be saying, hey, I'm right here, please catch me. Wouldn't be saying that. And so our inference in this case is that that is angry. Okay. So what do you notice about inference? You realize that in both sources, the picture of the man running and the story about Bartley's dad, the source never told you this. The source never told you the man is late. The source never told you that is angry. You figured it out. In other words, and please write this down, inference is a guess. You figure out based on source details. This is an inference. It is a guess or something you figure out based on source details. It's a guess. And the fact that you figure it out means that it must be done in your own words. Not in the words of the source, but in your own words. That's really important. So pause and write down what you need to write down. And let me move on. So a source. What, does, what is a source? Right? These are examples of sources. Pictures, text, artifacts audio sources. A source gives us information about the world. So let's write that down. A source gives us information about the world. So what is a historical source? And now today, many of you got the right answer. A historical source gives us information about the past. The past. So please write it down on your worksheet. A source gives us information about the world. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was sharing the wrong, the wrong thing. So, so this is what I wanted to share. A source gives us information about the world. And a historical source gives us information about the past. And these are some examples of possible sources. So pause if you need to at this, at this slide. And I would like you to Fill in the worksheet, the world and the past. So let's highlight, let's highlight. An inference, let's highlight. It's a guess about what a source is saying. And this guess uses details from the source. And these details are known as evidence. Let's highlight. Historical sources tell us something about the past. Historical sources tell us something about the past. And so, they help us make inferences based on a question focus. So, I want you to highlight all this. And set once, if you need to, pause the video and read this whole page. It's all set up for inference. 
Let me move on. So on page two, let's highlight answering the question. Every inference question has a certain way to answer. So what is this way? Let's look at the options. If the question is, what does source A tell you? I have to answer it with, source A tells me that. At this point, you can pause and think about how you would answer the next two questions. I hope you thought about it. What can you infer from source B? I can infer that. I can infer from source B that. And what can you learn from source C? It would be, I can learn from source C that. Okay, this is how we start answering questions. Look, we are answering questions directly as the question asks us. What does source A tell you? Source A tells me. What can you learn from source C? I can learn from source C. This is how we start our answer. Let's do some practice. Again, if you need to, and please pause the video and read the source. Okay, so a typical inference question would be, what can you infer from source A about people in early Singapore? Okay, we highlight this. This is known as our question focus. This is known as a question focus. Importantly, I must answer to the question focus. So let me look at the source. I need to look for sentences in the source that relate to my question focus, which is people in early Singapore. So I look at the source. The hill is called Pantu and its terraces resemble a coil. Okay, not about people yet. So I keep going. People live around the hill. Okay, now there's something about people. Might there be more? Let's keep going. The soil is poor and grain is scarce. The climate is irregular for there is heavy rain in summer when it is cool. The inhabitants are honest and hardworking. Now I have something about the people. They are under the rule of a local chief. They boil seawater to obtain salt and ferment rice to make wine. So these two sentences really tell me about the people. Specifically, they tell me that the people are honest, hardworking, obtain salt by boiling seawater, and get wine by fermenting rice. Now, remember that when we do inference, we cannot use the source words. We have to use our own words. So let's look at it. What can you infer from source A? How can I answer the question? I would use this, right? When it's what can you infer, I go, I can infer. So I can infer from source A that people in early Singapore could, were self-sufficient and could take care of themselves. Notice that this answer directly addresses the focus. What can you infer about people in early Singapore? Well, I can infer that people in early Singapore were self-sufficient and took care of themselves. I've answered my question. Great. Let me get rid of this so that we have a bit more space to look at the source box. Okay, so I'm just going to black this out first because I want you to get the idea of inference. At this point, you have used your own words to get the inference. You have achieved two marks. You have achieved two marks. The inference question is a five mark question. Like I said at the start of this video, inference questions are five marks each for a total of 10 marks in the first exam, WA1. And so you have two marks. Since you can infer from source A that people can take care of themselves, you have to use the source to 
support your answer to get details from the source that show your inference. And this is called evidence. This is called evidence. I have my inference that people in Singapore, early Singapore are self-sufficient. I now want my evidence and I use these keywords. Let's highlight together. This is evident from source A. This is evident from source A. And which part of source A has shown me that the people are self-sufficient and take care of themselves? It was this sentence. They boil seawater to obtain salt and ferment rice to make wine. Look, these people in early Singapore, they are making their own salt. They are making their own wine. This shows me that they are counting on themselves. They are taking care of themselves. They are self-sufficient. Right? So in other words, this is my evidence. So I, I'm going to write an inference answer like that. I can infer from source A that people in early Singapore were self-sufficient and able to take care of themselves. This is evident from source A, which states they boil seawater to obtain salt and ferment rice to make wine. Set ones. This is three marks. Notice that once you have selected the right evidence from the source and you have answered the focus, you have already passed. You are already at three out of five. But I want to go further. I want to do more. I want to achieve better results. And so the last component of this answer, inference, evidence, I need to explain. I need to explain. And to explain, I need to show more about what does it mean that people can take care of themselves. Now, set ones, let's think about it. If the people can boil seawater to get salt, do you think they are do you think they are not, you know, very structured and boring? Or do you think they are very creative and innovative? They are creative, right? And if they are making wine and salt on their own, do you think they like to depend on others? Or do you think they don't need to depend on others? They, they are always doing everything by themselves. They don't depend on others, right? And so my explanation looks like this. I'll use the words, this is because, in my explanation. And very importantly, I'm going to write it in my own words. So again, the explanation, just like the inference, must be in my own words. That's really important. So let's explain. They are taking care of themselves. The people in early Singapore are taking care of themselves because they find creative ways to make their own foods and drinks, which is the salt and the wine by using what's available for marks. And so they can feed themselves even without other people's help. Five marks. This is a full five mark answer for inference. Can we, can we see that this is a very good answer? I have given the inference, which is that I can infer that people in early Singapore are self-sufficient. By the way, self-sufficient means that they can live on their own and able to take care of themselves. This is because people would find creative ways to make their own foods and drinks by using what's around them and thus feed themselves even without good weather or help of other people. And finally, my evidence, this is evident from source A, which states they boil seawater to obtain salt and ferment rice to make wine. At this point, you should scroll up, you should go up to the first part of your page two worksheet and you can see the four steps to answering an inference question. One, answer the question, which is source A tells me I can infer all that. Two, give the inference based on the focus. Three, explain the inference. And four, give evidence from the source. Okay, let's try again for the next page. Let's go to page three. It's the same source. It's the same source. Look at this question. What does source A tell you about the conditions for farming in early Singapore? What is the question focus? 
go and highlight it, set once. Go and highlight the question focus. Okay, so you figured it out. Is this? This is the question focus. You should pause this video now and try these two boxes on your own. So pause the video and try these two boxes on your own. Go. I hope you try it because I'm going to go through and you learn best when you try first. What does source A tell you? Immediately, I'm going to go source A tells me that. And it's talking about the, the conditions for farming in early Singapore. So I want to highlight the best evidence first, right? The hill is called Pantu and its terraces resemble a coil. Okay, not much yet. People live around the hill. The soil is poor and the grain is scarce. The climate is irregular. This is my best evidence. Right? It says the soil is poor. The grain is scarce. The climate is irregular. So do you think this is a good condition or a bad condition for farming? It's clearly bad. So it's bad or unsuitable or unviable or not conducive. Any of these terms or words would be a good and valid inference. All of this will achieve marks and by giving the evidence that we found three marks at once that's it this is a three mark answer out of five but you know we want to go for higher we want the full five marks right we want the full five marks we are not happy to stop here so let's try our explanation an explanation we are going to use the words this is because. This is because. We're going to use these words. This is because. And it has to be in our own words. In my, our own words. In my own words. Explanation cannot be taken from the source. So how can I do an explanation? The conditions are bad because why? I can use the evidence. I can use the source. But in my own words. The soil is poor. I could say the land the land is the land does not allow for easy planting and so there is little food grown right the grain is scarce and even the weather um you could say it's erratic and unpredictable and might damage the crops. Okay, so this answer would be this answer would be a full mark answer. Please pause this video and copy what you need to copy. Pause the video and copy what you need to copy. And my background's a bit brighter because the sun has set here. The sun just set and I needed to switch on my room lights. Okay, set once. Inference is doable. You need to figure it out. And inference is, of course, always in your own words, in our own words. Are you ready for the last inference of this page? Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go. So now test yourself. Highlight the question focus. Yes, it's here. The character of people in early Singapore. Okay, I'm going to use green so that we are going to highlight the evidence in green, right? So I want to highlight the good evidence in green, the character of people in early Singapore.
Which part of this source is about the character of people? Please try to highlight. Think about it. It's here, isn't it? The inhabitants are honest and hardworking. Right? It's here. Try this ATQ and inference on your own. Try it. If you don't want to write, think about it in your head. How do I start? My answer. How do I start? The question is, what can you learn from source A about the character of people in early Singapore? How do I start? I will start by answering the question. ATQ, answering the question. What can you learn? I can learn from source A that the people in early Singapore had a what character? You could say good character, right? Good character. This is because, okay, let's do the evidence first. The evidence is here, right? Honest and hardworking. And then we could go on to do this part as well. They boil seawater because this part shows how hardworking they are. Right? So this is because. Because why? Again, we use our own words. I cannot say honest. I will say the people in early Singapore were sincere and had integrity. They were also diligent in making their own food and drinks to sustain themselves. Notice, set ones, that I haven't used the words in the source. The ideas are all here. Honest, hardworking, boy sea water, ferment rice. The ideas are all here. But I used, and I think you're going to get sick of this phrase, I use my own words, right? So that's really important, using your own words. Because if you don't use your own words, you are not inferring. Inference is a guess based on the source details. It's a guess. The source does not tell you directly the inference. And so if you were to use the words from the source, you are not guessing. You are copying. And if you were to copy, you have no inference. You couldn't get two marks. So the first thing here, the first two marks you get here is from using your own words. Good character, right? It's not in the source. Good character. Because the inhabitants, I quote the evidence, inhabitants are honest and hardworking. They boil seawater to obtain salt and ferment rice to make wine. And then I have my explanation. They are sincere and have integrity. They work hard to sustain themselves. So I'm done with my video lesson for today, set once. What you should do, what your work is now, is I want you to not only fill up your worksheet, all of page 1, 2, and 3, right? I want you to also write out these answers on full scale. So, so what does that mean? So for example, on full scap, on full scap, I want you to write this. You copy the question like that. So on full scap, you copy something like question one. What can you infer about from source A about people in early Singapore? And then you would write down the whole answer in a paragraph. Like that. So, side ones, 
you would have this on full scale. And you do it for the next two questions as well, which is question two. I think what can you infer from source A about, about the conditions for farming, right? And question three, what can you learn from source A? Oh, maybe question two wasn't what can you infer. What does source A tell you? I'm pretty sure I said something different. So I want you to do this. I want you to write out all three questions and all three answers on full scale. Set once, this is your homework for the next two weeks because I don't see you next Monday if it's Chinese New Year celebrations. So please finish. So again, your homework. Finish Influence Worksheet page 1 to 3 and 2. I would like you to copy the full paragraph. For question 1, question 2, and question 3. On full scale. Okay, set one. Is that clear? That's your homework. I hope you have understood my inference lesson. If you have any questions, you can always look for me in the, in the school using this link that where you can book your consult. I'm sure, I'm sure I've shown you this link before. You can book your consult uh, and you can find me if you need more help for history. Okay, so that's my lesson for today. Uh, stay safe. Uh, I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.